Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 with our realistic series. Like, it... The, the guy who the guy who was showing us around the farm, he, he the, the farm manager, he was... He said that it, it's very, very different when you're approaching growing the majority of the crops on your farm, not as a for-profit operation, but a to break even operation and the only thing that was important was the sugar beet they had to make sure the sugar beet was one uh, able to be grown and two would get the best yields possible like, the, like the, everything was about the sugar beet they wanted it um, certain qualities in the plants and, and so on and they wanted it to just be the best that you could get um, so the other crops that they would put in and the rotations when they weren't growing a sugar beet in the field were all picked out in order to leave the right nutrients in the soil for the sugar beet to rest the soil in such a way that it would improve. Like everything was all about making it sure that the next time they grew sugar beet in the field it would give better yields and just improve things overall for the sugar beet itself. And it didn't matter about the profitability of it. That's uh, and the farm manager said it, is, it was very very different from any. He had he worked there for like five years, um, and he'd previously worked on two other big farms. So he had some experience with different places, and this was a really big uh, estate. This was I think it was like close to ten thousand acres, which uh, is it like two and a half acres for a hectare. I can't exactly remember. Um, if it's two and a half acres per hectare. Um, 10,000 is like, I don't know, three, three and a half thousand hectares, something like that. Big old place, anyway. Um, the, see, th this guy had a lot of experience with it. And any other place you work, a big arable enterprise, you plant a crop, you want to be making a profit out of that crop. The whole point is you make a profit out of that crop and you want to make the best profit that you can out of every crop and everything is planned accordingly you plan out everything all the way around so that you've got a really good profit on all of your crops and he said yes they did try to get a profit on the crops that they grew but that wasn't important so if they had like if he had a, a choice between two crops that would be equally beneficial for the next sugar beet harvest then it would be based on whichever one was the most profitable but if he had one that was profitable and one that was better for the sugar beet the sugar beet brought in so much money that if the profitable crop it wasn't quite so good for the sugar beet and he had another crop that they you know might that they would about break even on it maybe even make a small loss on it it would still probably end up being better overall for the farm to plant that one rather than the other one because of the difference with the sugar beet because they would get i don't i have no idea how it works but it was all about the, the amount of money that they would get for the sugar beet because they do all kinds of tests on each load that goes in and then they get paid according to uh, various sugar contents and so on in the beet. It's not just you get X amount per ton and that's it. There's all kinds of testing done and you're paid on the quality of the sugar beet and not the quantity. So the getting that quality of the sugar beet up was really, really important to me. Now obviously I went to university uh, 20... I'm just trying to figure it out. I actually started university when I was 18. So, um, I'm now 40, actually how old am I? I'm 42 now, I thought I was 41, but no, that was last year. Um, I'm now 42, so that was, I started university 24 years ago, which is a fairly long time, um, and 24 years ago, that was what the situation was. Now, what the situation is now, I have no idea. Obviously, things can change quite a bit in 24 years, especially in an industry like that. So it's entirely possible that the way sugar beet is paid for now by the factory is completely and totally different to the way the sugar beet was paid for back when I was having a tour of this farm that focused exclusively on growing sugar beet. So there is very likely a large difference 
There might not be. It might still be done in a similar way. And if it is, well, that, that, that's actually pretty cool. Right, I'm just going to... You know what? I'm just going to shut this whole thing off there. Oh, that's so much quieter, isn't it? Right. And we're going to take this one. And we're going to run this one up the road. Now, if we take a quick look in here, you can see we're on 19,000 here. It's not really changed very much. So this is just going to go straight to the sugar beet storage. And then we can chop it up a bit later. It is actually going to be in our best interest to chop all of the sugar beet that we've got before we go and sell any of it. And I am hoping to be able to sell some. Like, we're growing a ridiculous amount of it, so it's probably going to be a good idea to try and sell as much as we can. But I want to chop it up first. Now, I have got the factory... Okay, it's really struggling to pull that down through there. I have got the factory... Um productions mod so i can have this one and i can upgrade it it'll cost me uh 44000 to upgrade to level 2 so instead of the 40000 that we paid for the original it's now a little bit extra and that will double it up so it won't i don't think it doubles the cycles per month that's available it doubles the actually yes it does it will double so we'll do 24 cycles 24000 per month uh, we'll have 40,000 of space there and 40,000 of space there. So we could do that. I could bo um, boost those up. But I'm not quite sure at the moment. So I would like you in the comment section to tell me about that one. Do you think I should be using the factory upgrades and upgrading those small machines that we put on the farm? Or is that a little bit too unrealistic? Because quite frankly, that is an unrealistic thing. Um... Yes, I know that we'd be paying extra money for it, and I could argue that the extra money is because the increased mechanisms and uh, processing area is being put below ground. We're digging it into the ground, which is why we're kind of doing it like that, but still, it's not very realistic. If you were going to do that in real life, you would be getting a, a different machine you'd just be getting an extra machine and you're putting it up alongside it so do you want me to use the factory upgrades or do you think that's kind of a little bit too much also the sheep should we try and do sheep cheese or do you think i should just leave the whole sheep cheese thing sell the milk as it comes out and not worry about any of the rest of it i mean that pen apparently only produces milk we don't get wool coming out of that one I kind of would also like to get some wool and we'll be selling wool straight out of the sheep pen. I wasn't actually planning to do anything else with it. I'm going to do, I think, just one more pass around the field and then I'm going to start the hired help working in here. Should be enough. I'm looking at the, the width that we've got now around the outside edge for being able to turn the machine around. And I think we've got enough space here to turn round. Um, like over by the fence over the other side. We'll see when we get down there and see what that's like. So has anybody had anything to do with sugar beet growing in real life? I'd like to know if anybody has ever driven one of these. I've seen videos of these being driven. There's a YouTube channel called Tractor Spotter, which is a really, really good YouTube channel. And he does some fantastic footage. He's got footage of all kinds. He's based in the Netherlands. And there in the Netherlands, they do use some absolutely huge machinery for doing likes of sugar beet and potatoes and stuff like that. Um, and it's a really good area for growing stuff like this because it's all flat. And being absolutely dead flat, they can grow vast quantities of stuff like this. Um, it's a bit more difficult to grow a crop like this and use a machine like this on steep hills. It definitely does make life a little bit more difficult. If you've got everything nice and flat and level, it's much more simple to go and do it. And that's what they've got in there. So, track spotter. It, it, that's literally, it's just all one word, track spotter. If you're interested in that sort of thing, go and check out that channel. I think you probably quite enjoy it so you get to see machines like this one and also the homer um driving up and down the fields um and he's got literally every type of farm machinery you can think of on there now he's done a huge amount of work he went silent for like it was like i think at least a year it may have been 18 months where there was just no videos produced at all and i thought he'd 
basically gone. Um, I didn't unsubscribe to the channel or anything. I just had it there and forgotten all about it. And then one day there was a new video posted. And it, there wasn't a lot written up about it, but it did just say that he's been busy working on some additional projects. And then he started posting up the videos of the tractor work and that that he'd gotten. And some of the stuff was absolutely amazing. Like he, I, I think what he'd done was that he earned enough money from the channel to start with that he was then able to take a year and just go round doing a load of filming and then he's just slowly trickling those in while he still goes and does his filming um it's absolutely brilliant it's, it, that, that, that's fantastic and the the footage is really really good like it's not some shaky um handheld camera thing it's professional level footage of the machines working in the fields and it is really really done well so if you're at all interested in tractors machinery working in the fields that kind of thing tractor spotter is definitely one to go and look at there is actually i've got a recommended channels section in my uh, on my youtube page um if you go to my home page um, there is a option there somewhere where you can go to recommended channels and I got a few different recommended ones uh, there's a few people who've helped me out on the channel uh, like Ducky uh, uh, so Duck Zorley and uh, there's a couple of others on there as well I think Ryder is on there um, they've got their own channels so there's links to their channels on there just the little ones and then there's some channels that I just generally find really awesome and I really enjoy and one of those is the track spotter one and then there's a few others in there as well just for some extras now, i think this is enough space for us to be able to turn around so i'm going to bring it up over here and i'm going to start the hired help working and we'll see if we have actually got enough room to be turning around i might have to do another time around the field i'm not quite sure yet so i'm just going to bring you over there right on that very edge because he's got room there, and usually the way they turn round is that they kind of just reverse back up over the crop. So it should be all right. See, he's going to spin round there. Huh. Yeah, they do do some weird ways of turning sometimes. I think it's because they get a bit confused with how the steering is working. It takes quite a while. He's straightening up now and seeming to do it all right. And he's got enough room there up against the fence to be able to turn round. So he's done that bit all right. Goes up across the fields absolutely wonderful and tickety boo and then we've got to see if he can actually turn around again so there's trees and fence and stuff over there is he going to be able to do it well it still took him a little minute but he did manage to turn around eventually and he's reversing all the way up here bit by bit he's getting there and we're back across the field again so i'm gonna kind of just stick around and make sure he's able to do the longer turns on the f actually you know what while he's doing that bit there i'm gonna have this one because this is going to be right in the way of him trying to turn around so actually we could go and just empty this out a minute and then we've got a, a full lot because the harvester won't need emptying out now until we've got the thing completely full up so it's going to take a minute to get to that so if i bring this one up and i empty it out then we need to be looking at grass equipment so i got to decide what i'm going to use for cutting the grass field now i don't want to be using too small a baler because uh, baler, uh, too small a well any of the machinery because it's just going to end up costing us if we do that because it's quite a big field, so we're going to want to be able to get round the field and cover the ground as well. So we've got all of that. So we're going to need a big set of mowers to do that. I've also got to make sure that I do the weed control up here. Let's fold that one back up again. One other thing I want to do is I just want to have a look at the weeds 
pretty sure just a normal hoe is going to be enough. Um, and we haven't actually gone to the next stage where we won't be able to do the weed control because they've gone to like the, the very biggest ones that we can get. I don't think we will have reached that point just yet. Let's whiz back over here. Around there. And... Right. Looking at the weeds in there, the hoe will actually take care of them. Yeah, they're medium weeds. So we can do that with the hoe. They haven't grown bigger still so that we need... Um, well, if, if the weeds get to the biggest stage, the only way you can take care of them is to use the sprayer. And I really don't want to use a sprayer. So for now, I'm going to tuck this one here in behind... Let's just turn that beacon off. I'm going to tuck it in behind the tree so it'll be out of the way of the harvester. And... Plowing is coming along really nicely, actually. We'll strip these left all the way across the field there, but we can worry about that later. That is doing a really good job. So we've got the plowing coming along really well there. You are doing a great job here. We've got 7,000 litres on board. He's going to need to turn around now. And this is going to be... You are probably just going to help this one out. Where's he going to go? be able to do it. Well, he does actually seem like he might be able to do that. So let's leave him there doing his turning round. And in the meantime, we need to go for mowers. So I'm not going to use something like that. That's just going to take us way too long to go and use one of them. Um, we've got some different options in here. This is is a really, really awesome machine. It's quite wide, and it's very fast. It's one of the widest ones that we've got, and I think it does also have a swathing option, but it doesn't matter if it does or not. Uh, work mode on there. Yeah, it's got a swathing option. You add the collector on there, but we don't need a swathing option. We're making hay, so we would just want it left out on the ground. This is a really big one. However, the one thing I don't like about this one is that it does leave the... Um, when you're going around the corners, it does leave bits on the corners, and it, it's slightly inconvenient. And also, I seem to remember the hired help struggling with this one, struggling to turn it round and stuff like that on the headlands, which was a, a slight nuisance then you've got the vermeer one right here this is again it's similar you've got like a double one i don't think that that one when he's unfolded joins together i think you still need a front mower on this one you know i can't actually remember 6.3 meters yeah it's not very wide it's only 6.3 meters that was with the vermeer pack that came through and then we've got some various other options here so uh Hmm. The Nova Cat one is kind of the one I normally go towards. It's 10 meters wide. So I'm kind of thinking that we're just going to go with that one. And there's a few other options that we've got here. These are ones that are edited by Stevie. There's the Class Disco Pack right here. That's another 10 meter mower. And there is also like the, the swather options, but I don't really want to do that. Not not really wanting to do swathers. That's 10 meters. That's 10 meters. That's 10 meters. See, they're all about 10 meters. That was a little bit shorter at 8 meters. And then you've got various different trailed ones. A few other options here. And then we've got this Vicon Extra. Again, is 10 meters. So they're all around about the same. Um... Which is, yeah, so we'll just go with this one right here now to start with. And we're going to lease that one. That's 3,800. So at least with the leasing options, it's not going to cost us a vast amount of money to do so. So I got that one. And then we're going to want to have some, uh, well, we're going to want a tether to go with it. So you've got a couple of different options with the tethers. We can go with just the standard ones. You've got this nice, great, big 17-meter beastie. That That's absolutely great glorious and grand there's a few others here um i know that some of these have got 
you, you can twist the wheels around so that they drag the stuff in from the outside edges. And I really, really like those options. But I can never remember which ones have got those options and which ones don't. So I'm kind of thinking I'm just going to go with the base game one for now. And we'll worry about the ones that twist around. I think the Feller Grassland equipment stuff does. Well, I kind of like the idea of trying that one out. It's not a lot different to the base game one, this one. And I haven't really used this one. I don't know if I've ever actually used this one at all. I might go with this one. Let's, yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, that's another 2,000 to get that one. There we go. This one is busy turning around. I've got 23,000 litres of sugar beet in there at the moment. By the time he gets up to the other end of the field, we could probably tip that one out while he is driving up to the other end of the field i don't want that tractor uh you right the water can just stay there i will go and get the mowers now as i'm using mowers it's a plural uh we're going to want to do this i'm going to lower that front weight down and i'm going to leave it right there and then i can race off down towards the shop and I can go and get me a set of mowers ready to head up to our brand new shiny field that we've got. And we can start doing some mowing. Right, we in around there. It'd be nice to get this field all hard. I think this field's going to be interesting to harvest. I'm not quite sure how the harvester is going to cope with it, though. I think there's some bits. I totally didn't just drive over anybody there. It was a figment of your imagination. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure how it's going to cope with it. Um, we'll, we'll have to wait and see on that one. Now, which way around do we get? We'll go this way. Is this mower... Because do you remember in the last one we had the mowers where you could clip them on together? But I don't think we've actually got that now. Because you can't join the mower onto that one. We had a set of mowers, and you could put them all together, and then you drove the tractor backwards, and you that was kind of like a, a big thing. It was all used in the um, trailer for the... Um, I think it was FS-17, actually, that that one was brought in. Um, but now they don't have it. They haven't got the mowers that join together, and you can do the reverse driving with them. And it's kind of disappointing to me. I really liked that. I thought it was a really, really cool feature. I mean, yes, it was one that people didn't use very much, because the hired help wouldn't do the reverse driving, which was a bit disappointing, really. Um, I was not the only one that was a bit disappointed with that. It was just, it was, yeah, we, we, we all got our hopes up for that. It was going to be absolutely wonderful. And then we weren't able to use one of these really awesome features that was brought into the game. All right, has he been up and turned around? I think he probably has, actually. Let's bring you over there. He's whizzing off down there. Can I get to him before he gets to the end of the field? If I can, that would be great. Because then I can get that bit unloaded. I don't think I can. He's only on 88%. He's not going to be able to get back up across the field. But if I can get to him here before he does too much trying to turn. It's got to unfold and it's got to start tipping. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right. He's, um... He started tipping into me. If I move that trailer, if it doesn't quite stay there, then we're going to have problems. Hopefully, he will just tip the whole lot out. At least I've unloaded enough now that if he does decide to take off... It's a little bit temperamental with this. As soon as he starts tipping... The, the bit that annoys me is that while the um, the spout is moving out towards you, it will not stop. Like It will just keep going and carry on with the, the turning round bit and, and all the rest of it, which is slightly frustrating if you want it to pick up the... if you want it to um, unload the crop into you just, just before you it turns around and tries to go back across the field. What happened there? was a dead stop oh right I can't get under the tree hmm. okay that 
tractor there has kindly decided to just move out of my way a little tiny bit. This is not the best way to go doing this, is it? It really isn't. And now we can race up here. So it's half past two in the afternoon. We do still have another day for October, though, so I'm not going to slow the time scale down or anything like that just yet. Um, we can keep going with our harvest and everything as we are. Uh, the only issue that we might have is if it's going to rain. What's the weather forecast for tomorrow? It's actually going to be sunny all day. All right, excellent. That's really good news, that is. Let's put Spout out there. And then bring you over this way. Tip that lot out. I'll run this one back down and then we can go and start doing our um, grass cutting. Alrighty then. I am back doing some more recording. The uh, sugar beet harvester is racing off across the field in that wise direction. And I am going through... Here, I still need to weed the field there, don't I? I forgot about that. Uh, I've got a... Oh, the, the plough is working up here. I forgot to put this one going. Um, right, that one can carry on there. Keep doing that. But I mustn't forget that I've got to weed the field up there. And I don't have a vehicle to go and do that with unless I use this one what I could do is I could leave this one here and then have the sugar beet harvester unload into it while this tractor does some weeding in that field because uh, I wanted to go and do the mowing as well but I got to get the weeding done before it goes to a higher stage so we'll go with this one right here Ooh, no I don't want to do that um, put that one down there like that and then the sugar beet harvester can just unload into it once it's ready we're going to race back up to the farm I think we've got a weeder I'd completely forgotten about that I was so caught up with doing the harvest last time and also I need to do the mowing I want to do the mowing I want to get going with that that's a job that I'm quite looking forward to doing it's it's a, it's a little bit different it's uh winging around here if we've got a weeder it's parked down over here somewhere but I don't know if we've got one we might have to go and lease one um I mean we can in theory we can afford to go and buy one we do have a bit of money but we do have one we've got one right here it's not a weeder that we're after it's a hoe Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.